What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So, today we have How to Prepare for Whispers in the Wall. The new update's coming out in a couple days here, and yeah, maybe some of you want to know how I'm preparing for Whispers in the Wall, what I'm doing to get all this stuff ready for, you know, upcoming videos, and just to play the update immediately at launch, basically. So we'll be going over that kind of stuff. Before we get into it, though, make sure to sub this channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads. Also, I'll be live after this video goes up with drops on my channel. There will be an Iatan Sculpture, an Orican Reactor, and an Orican Catalyst for watching a total of three hours. You haven't gotten those already. So, yeah, I'll be live for definitely more than three hours tonight. So come on, stop by. You want to check these out. They will be also active during the Whispers in the Wall release. So no big rush if you don't really want to watch tonight, though. But, yeah, I'd appreciate if you come hang out for have some fun. All right, let's get right into it. So as far as the Whispers in the Wall, I'm going to be also going over their hype site right now so you can actually see what's going to be in this update because there's a good good amount of stuff in here. So uh, it's going to be releasing on December 13th on all platforms, probably around 11 a.m. ET, I'd guess. Or between 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. ET is when this will actually drop on all platforms. Just keep that in mind. But as far as uh, the features... Uh, it's the next step of Warframe's epic chapter, so there's going uh, to be a new quest, there's going to be a new Warframe, there's going to be a lot of new stuff in there. So, um, and yeah, also cross-save. So one of the things, let's start with the prep guide right now. So for cross-save, uh, here's what you can do to prepare. Now, for, uh, for when cross-save goes active, it will only be available for founders at launch, but they'll be rolling it out to other players afterwards, and there will be an account. Uh, you can basically check if your account's viable for it in the account management page on the website. But here's what you have to do. You have to decide which... So let's say you have multiple accounts. So you're like, oh man, I've been waiting to come to PC this whole time. Uh, I've been on Xbox for five years or whatever. I don't want to play on Xbox anymore. You have to decide that... Do, if you Let's say you made a new PC account. You have to decide which account will be your main account going forward. That will be one of the things to decide. Okay, do you want your PC account to be the one? It's like, it's got more recent stuff on it. Because remember, the, the accounts will get merged together. There, there's a full cross-save like FAQ I'm going to link in the, in the description. But basically, you have to pick which account you want to be your main. That will be the one that keeps all the quest progress and stuff like that. So if you're planning on using cross-save, decide which account will be your main account is the first prepare tip. All right. But yeah, going over this quest too, uh, another thing to prepare for is making sure you are able to do this quest. The quest requirements will be Heart of Diamos and the New War quest. Additionally, there will be new Archon Shards. These green Archon Shards will be green, orange, and purple Archon Shards. You should probably do the Veilbreaker quest too. I don't know if the Veilbreaker quest is required for this, but it probably is, since a lot of the loot in this new update will be Archon Shard related. But it's moving through their hype site. Uh, we have the Sevagoth. So this is this is because the drops messed up yesterday or two days ago. Uh, the Sevagoth drops got messed up. There will be a Sevagoth, uh, you know, alert with... Each Sevagoth part in these alerts, you can get an Epitaph and a Sevagoth from doing these. That's not really important, though. Uh, that's just, like, whoops, the, the drops broke. So here's your here's the makeup drops. That'll be available for from December 13th to the 20th, though. So pretty nice there. Now, as far as, uh, you know, what we're going to be playing and doing in this alert, or in this <laughs> in this alert, in this update, uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff. There's this, uh, the Calimo sequence, I believe, is the name of the quest. So this is the question you need to be doing the new war and all that to get to. So have a Necromech, have a Railjack. You might want to have a pretty good Necromech build. Uh, that'll be later in the, in the prep guide. There's a new uh, laboratory tile set. There's some new a new enemy faction, like a Necromech enemy faction, more uh, fleshed out. And it's a really cool looking tile set. And the man the wall is going to have a special boss fight. Uh, well, one of his minions will have a boss fight. And we actually know a lot about what this boss fight will be. Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming they're going to force us to use Necromechs to fight this thing, unfortunately. But yeah, speaking of game modes, we have a couple new game modes. So we have Alchemy. This is the one where you go out and you find like you find the heat element, you go find the blue element or the, the cold element, you bring it back to the mixer, and that's what it, there's also a loke surge in the background, it looks like too. So there might be loke surges and collecting elements for this new endless game mode. This this game mode will not be the new event though. Gargoyle's Cry will be the newest. It will be it will be assassination for some reason. Speaking of assassination, here is how it's gonna work. Hunt down and assassinate the fragmented one by defending an all-seeing eye. But be wary. The man in the wall is watching and won't hesitate to send swarms of foes to halt your progress. This is what uh, this is what Gargoyle's Cry will be, apparently. So, it will be um, defending an eyeball and then going and killing a boss. So that's what it sounds like the new event will be for the clans. And then we also have Netra Cells. Uh, kind of think of these like a new version of Auric and Derelict Vault missions. Uh, seek out void-touched Netra Cells with Albrecht's laboratory to uncover secret knowledge. Locked Netra Cell doors can only be opened by equipping the correct Netra... Uh, the correct... Key glyph. Key glyphs are a heavy burden, so squads squ squad to share the weight of this knowledge and find the valuable contents with it. They're literally like Isolation Vaults 2.0. So you will technically be able to solo these, but 
they're going to be likely a lot worse, uh, you know, downsized than just the normal decaying dragon key we have. So, yeah, uh, probably should do this with the squad, but there will be new uh, loot inside these isolation vaults, or Netra Cell vaults. New friend Corvex, nothing really to prepare for on him, he just looks cool. He'll be uh, like a concrete rock golem frame kind of thing. There's a new weapon type Tome, nothing really to prepare for on this. This should come from the quest. Just by being the quest, you should get this, uh, the blueprint at least. There will be new Tome mods. Okay, so let's start with some other prep tips here. There will be new Tome mods. If you have a mod drop booster already going, that will increase the drop rate of Tome mods from the enemies. Uh, but if you don't, have a, if you do not have an, a uh, mod drop booster going, it's only available from Borrow and from Sorties. So yeah, unfortunately, you can't really do anything about that. But if you do have a mod booster, good for you. You'll probably get lots of Tome mods. We've got some uh, new supporter bundle I showed in my previous video. There's a new uh, new player bundle that comes with Mag and Rhino. So if you are a new brand new player, there you go. And there's some merch. Uh, just to cross it. Okay, let's that's enough about that. Let's start talking about things you can actually prep for in your ship. That's enough on the hype site. So. Um, as far as prep stuff we didn't already talk about, so I, as, as I said, make sure you pick which account you want as your cross-save main account. Uh, also, do the Heart of Dimos and the New War quest. But here's another thing, too. Now, since we're getting a new tile set, guys, here is here is the this is, this is the truth right here. Whenever we get a new tile set in the game, what do they usually add? New resources. So I'm going to recommend that you get, uh, well, maybe not the blue resource drop chance booster, but at least get the resource drop amount booster. Since we're going to be new resources from these enemies, most likely, a lot of the resources should be affected by a resource uh, booster. Now, some of the resources will not be affected by a booster. There's a new resource we'll be using to actually fuse Archon Shards together for those green ones and stuff. I don't think that will be affected by a booster, personally. But a lot of the stuff will be, you know, things you're going to be built, dropping from the enemies to have uh, Corvax building, the stuff that you're going to be using to build, you know, a bunch of stuff will likely have new resources from enemies' uh, deaths. So... I say buy a booster. You can even buy other boosters too if you want to. Uh, if you're be buying, if you're leveling up a Necromac, might as well get an XP booster. But yeah, I have all of them active. I recommend if you want to be fully prepared, you have them all active too. Of course, maybe not the credit booster, but uh, yeah. As far as the resource ones, the drop amount will give you double the amount of resources per drop, and then the resource drop chance will increase the drop rate, will basically double the drop rate of rare resources from enemies. So. That might be good too, but also it might not be because there might be some things that just don't actually get affected by boosters because they've been doing that a lot recently uh, with Warframe. So yeah, get some boosters if you want to. Uh, the best value is to buy them for 30 days each. They're like 200 plat each for 30 days. Um, so yeah, going over that that uh, new boss fight, I think that it's going to actually force us to use a Necromech at some point. So I'd say maybe try to get a somewhat decent Necromech build together. Uh, I'd definitely recommend the Void Rig over the Bone Widow. Uh, and as far as the Void Rig build, i it's a lot of mod slots, okay? It's a lot of mod slots. I'm aware. It, it takes like six... So, to get a fully modded out uh, Necromech with this build, it took six formas. And to get full mastery out of a Necromech, it only takes five formas to get maximum mastery. So, we did go one extra forma to fit this all on here. Uh, and I'm not going to go over what every mod does, but they're very similar to the mods we use on actual Warframe. So, like, we got Streamline here. We got Flow for more energy. Just like you say in your four for longer. So, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's... Limited amount of Necromech mods, but uh, yeah, some of them, like, melee attack speed on Necromech, that's not going to be helpful for the new boss. So, there's certain things that will be actually helpful just because they buff the gun of the Void Rig, and some things that just aren't helpful because they don't do anything at all for the gun. And the gun on uh, the Arquebex gun, Yard Mode, is extremely powerful when you fully mod it out. Speaking of which, uh, my Arquebex build, I think it's on Electric right now to kill Thumpers, but you can really change it around easily. This is a Corrosive build. Actually, a Radiation, Radiation Cold build right here. Um... Pretty good. We don't know what it will be week two. That thing will probably be weak to either radiation or corrosive. So you can easily swap it around. Right now we have radiation. You can just swap corrosive with one, one mod swap. Just take that one, put it right there. Now we got corrosive and cold. And that will it's, it's very easy to switch this around, depending on what that thing will be weak to. But yeah. So moving on past that, uh, the whole Arcwing gun thing probably won't matter as much either. But yeah, Arcwing guns are getting a mini buff. We're gonna get some we're gonna get some uh, overguard when we, call, when we call these things down, so that's pretty cool. Now, here's something that is definitely, uh, it's more of a, wow, I really waste a lot of resources doing that kind of thing. And I've already done this. Yours truly has already done this. But what you can do is you can go across all your frames, and you can go take out all the shards that you don't want to keep on those frames. Because, like I said, we'll be having this new shard fusion thing, and these new shards you can fuse into are really seeming strong. Now, I think these, this green one will get nerfed before it actually comes out. But, I mean, look at these effects. Increase maximum corrosive stacks by plus two. You know, those things will remove enemy armor fully, increase damage of toxin procs, it's basically made for Saren. This shard right here will take two shards to make. So what you can do, and there will probably be Tau shard versions too, I don't think there's any, we haven't heard that they're not going to have them. 
What you can do is you can go across all your frames. Let's say you, that you don't want a shard on a Naros or whatever. You go back here, and you can just take all those shards off to have them sitting around. So as you can see, I already did this. I've got five Tau red shards sitting around, four Tau ambers, and two uh, Tau blues. I've got a bunch of Tau shards on a Naro, so I could take those off of them if I wanted to. But we've also got a bunch of normal shards sitting around, too. This will be for shard fusion. It was a lot of bile to do this. Uh, these... Most of these were like on frames already. I had to like do some serious shard consolidation. I'm like, okay, does that frame need shards? Does that frame need shards? Because we're getting power crept a lot here, guys. We're gonna be getting these new orange orange shards seem good too. We haven't seen what purple shards do, but yeah, you're gonna want to fuse into these because they're gonna be really strong. Uh, and if you don't have these sitting around, you have to waste the bile later. So just go and it, it only costs bile, unfortunately, right now. But you know, there's plenty of ways to get bile. You know, void gel orbs from the Zeramon. Morphix, for, maybe not plenty. There's a couple ways to get bile. There's Morphix from uh, Mercury and stuff like that. There's Argon Crystals in the Void. I usually just go for Void Gel Orbs, but I'm actually a little bit low on Void Gel Orbs, so I should probably farm some Arcanes from Void Cascade. And that cascades, uh, <laughs> cascades us into our next point, pun intended. Uh, there will be a new Arcane Grind Down system. So once you got all your Archon Shards removed and all that, you're ready to fuse into the next ones. You'd go on to Void Cascade, maybe. Uh, there will be a new arcane grind down system. So all those merciless you have sitting around, you can maybe turn those into energized. So nothing to really prepare for on this. Just be aware this is happening. You will be able to grind these down into like new arcane dust resource. I don't know what the official name of it is, but you'll be able to grind like the 700 merciless you have sitting around down, and you'll be able to take those and you'll be, basically become an arcane loot box. And in that arcane loot box, things like arcane energized can be in there. That will be a thing that's getting added too. So, I mean, if you want to just go hoard a bunch of Arcane Merciless, you got a couple more days. You also got Arca Arcane Dexterity too. And Deadhead. So, you got plenty and plenty of those. I mean, these drop from uh, Acolytes guaranteed each time. And if you were to buy them from other players, they're probably like less than one plat each. So, yeah, you could do that. You could stack a ton of these up, try to get some Energize, see if you're lucky. Uh, I would really re recommend everybody, unless you got a bunch of plat sitting around, you just want to waste it. Because there's a chance you could just grind those down and get more Merciless back. Actually, no, technically not. There's different little. Uh, there will be different locations these loot boxes are from, and one of the locations will be Steel Path and Arbitration Arcane. So, yeah, you'll, maybe you'll get a uh, <laughs> an Arcane Nullifier instead of, like, the Magnetic Proc one. Okay, so uh, that is going to be most of the prep guide. Now, one more thing here uh, that I'm going to recommend. I'm going to probably do this on stream tonight. You might want to farm a little bit of Endo. I'm a little bit low on Endo right now, but there, will, like I said earlier, there will be these new Tome mods that will work for the books. And that will make it where you're going to be getting, you know, those mods will be, think of like the bond mods a little bit. They will only be for the books, and they'll be special effects. So, I've got like 260k, and that should probably be enough, actually. But if you look at the bond mods, like, this was, you know, probably a couple, maybe like 20,000 endo to level this all up. Maybe less. Um, so, you know, we're likely not going to get this many mods, new mods. But we'll get like, you know, probably five, I'd say. Five new mods for Tome mods. So make sure you got some endo for that. Not as big of a deal. It's not going to be, you know, there, I doubt there'll be ranked 10 mods, to be honest. So, yeah. That's basically it for the video, guys. Hope you find it fun and helpful. Um, as far as my prep guide, I've already removed a ton of shards from frames. Like, for example, uh, like, who's a friend that used to have shards in it anymore? I took all the shards off Garuda, but, you know, she doesn't really need them that badly. Uh, I took them all off of, I think Equinox had a bunch of shards. All those shards are gone on Equinox. Okay, still got casting speed. So, like, don't take them all off. There will be frames that, if you like the, ca like, for example, the casting speed is pretty important on a lot of frames for me. Uh, there's certain frames like Frost where it's like, oh, if you don't have the little amount of power strength, you're not going to get the full armor strips. So there's things like that. It's like, don't ruin your build doing this, but you do probably want to be prepared and have these shards sitting around, especially blue shards. A lot less important to have blue shards on frames like, oh, yeah, they give you a little more energy. Not always needed unless your build entirely hinges on that. So just be aware of that, like, you know, the new effects aren't going to entirely replace red. Like, there won't be a new... Our Contra just strip gives you power strength like this. Like these ones will still be good, and the casting speed ones aren't getting replaced either. But you know, if you want to get those new powerful effects, you're gonna want to have these shards sitting around. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate all the support. Take it easy. Uh, weekly reset tomorrow. Peace.